The notification flashed on my phone, an Instagram message from a stranger. Nice smile, he wrote. I'm Bobby Brown from Sacramento, California. He claimed to be an oil engineer, working in another country, of course, a classic claim of a romance scammer. To convince me, he sends this photo ID, but, hmm, the signature doesn't match his name and also shows me his neighborhood, supposedly in Edinburgh, but the cars are on the wrong side of the road. After weeks of professing his love, I call him out. Reluctantly, he gives up the ruse, says he'll talk if CBC conceals his identity, worried about his safety. His real hometown? Not Sacramento, Ogara, Nigeria, where he says he was forced to become a romance scammer after his father lost his job. He says he went to live with a man who trained him and others. Late in the night, you're going to be called to the living room, get your social media account ready, start hustling. He says he works on his own now, tells women, often in Canada, that he can't access his bank account since, you know, he's working overseas, needs data for his phone. They send him gift cards like these that he sells for cash. When a woman's clearly in love, he says, he goes for the big payoff, claims his son has been rushed to an American hospital and he urgently needs her to send a $3,000 deposit for care. This social psychologist says, unbelievable as the stories sound, people who think they're in a romantic relationship can feel obligated to help. Even a simple request uh, that might seem outlandish from an observer's point of view might feel different when you are the one being asked to do things. Last year, 945 Canadians lost more than $50 million to romance scammers, about 53000 each, and that's just what victims reported. The scammer tells me he knows it's wrong, but poverty runs deep. We're sorry we're not happy doing this, but we have no option. Well, Eric, an apology there, but that's not much comfort if you've been duped out of money. No, Ian. And as you know, we've done stories about people who've lost their entire life savings. So no one likes to be duped out of their money, no matter the size, especially where the heart is involved. And so what advice do you have for people who want to protect themselves from these scammers? You know, if you're contacted online by someone who claims they live near you, but they're working overseas, if they profess their love too quickly and then start pressuring you for money, those are all red flags. The best thing to do if that happens, delete those messages, block the account, and keep your cash. Good advice, Erica. Thank you. Thank you.